Hey guys, Guardian Matt here. Now I'm going to show you how I made these XPS Foam Hills for tabletop war games, as well as for D&D and other adventure miniature games. The first thing I did was just some, draw some rudimentary outlines of hills that I wanted to build. Um, I wasn't 100% sure how many I wanted. I ended up drawing four here of just random various shapes. Remember, don't make it circles. There are no circles in nature. Everything is always chaotic. Nothing is, you know, easily defined or looks manufactured. Always make everything, you know, random, uh, different, you know, ovile shapes and everything. End up drawing four, but I end up getting some more later on. You'll see how many I get. Uh, but I'm going to bust out the good old Proxon hot wire cutter for this job. And I'm just going to roughly try and follow the shapes. Obviously, I didn't get it best on camera, um, the actual cutting here. But just so you know, just know I am cutting through it, uh, trying to follow the lines. You don't have to. If it comes out a little jagged, if it comes out not the same, a little smaller, a little bigger, that's perfectly fine. Like if you look there on the left, that one kind of like ovile piece did come out a little bit more jagged than I was initially drawing, but that's perfectly fine. Remember, nature, like I said, not circles, not smooth, everything's chaotic. And I'm going to show you all the different pieces I got here. I think I ended up getting like almost nine or ten pieces out of this. I wanted to use as much of the actual board I had. And it was a four by four inch board. And uh, I completely forgot to you know remove this piece there. Um, I guess not four by four, it's probably uh, I forget how big it was itself, because that sticker was wrong. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna take off the stickers before you start cutting. Um, next, now I have all these done, all these shapes out, I'm gonna start scoring some, uh, I believe it's lateral, yeah, lateral lines um, across, just gonna do two of them, just to kind of define like different layers of rock uh, for maybe different like errors or just how things had gotten chipped off. Just get these across all the way around each one. And then I'm gonna take my knife here, cut off a little extra beveled stuff, and get a score this one around as well. Um, it's a bigger piece. You can see I've started on a couple other ones. I kind of just did them one at a time. Um, after you score them laterally, um, obviously, you know, watch yourself. I end up cutting myself here. And I think that's why I really cut this in. Show that, hey, this is a little dangerous. Once you score, score to everything around, you want to score it vertically a little bit around just to kind of like break up some of the definitions of it and then just take your knife or a piece of metal, a ruler or something like that, and just go across it, go up and down, uh, side to side, and just make these little striations of different rocks um, around the different sides of it, or any other place you want to be a rock. If you have a little bit on the top, go for it there as well. Just remember, be careful while you're doing this. You're using a knife. Um, you don't want it to be you know, too haphazard and cutting yourself like I did. Um, but yeah, just go across each one, make some vertical cuts, make these little striations, little rock interface, you know, go for it and then remember to clean up with any little extra bits that are on the side just make everything kind of smooth out now that we have all that done you're going to want to put some PVA glue down I ended up using um, gel glue itself because that's all I kind of had at hand right now and right now we're just going to be putting this first base layer down that we're going to end up painting over I'm just going to put it down Try and cover as much as you can. You, If you miss some spots, that's perfectly fine. Remember, nature isn't perfect, and it's going to be covered up by different layers later on. Maybe that just didn't have as much dirt, sunk down a little bit. That's why it's got a little bit of a spot. You know, make it however you want. But now that we have all that glue kind of spread out, I'm just going to take my little sand mixture I have here. This is a mixture of like coarse sand, fine sand, little pebbles and everything. And I just put it all into an old um, coffee container. And just so I can mix it up easier, just pour a bunch on here and kind of get as much on there as possible, cover all the glue up and, you know, just shake off all the excess. Like I said, we'll have some spots that aren't, you know, covered, but that'll be covered up on further level, you know, further down the steps. I was going to take some black paint and this is some, uh, some dirty water I've been using before and just water it down. This way I can just get a quick base coat over everything. If you want to use uh, Mod Podge, like black Mod Podge, mix some black paint with some water down uh, my body to make it a little bit stronger you can I opted to just you know cover it in black crafting now that that black level uh, layer is done 
and everything's kind of like across the board. I'm just going to take some brown paint because I want it to be a bit more arboreal and mix some of that um, uh, black watered down paint water that I have to just you know make it thin and just put it all over the top, all the parts where I put the sand down. Um, like I said, using the existing water I have just so it darkens it down as well because that is a very strong brown I'm putting on there, more, almost like a chocolatey color. And this kind of brings it a little bit more definition, so you don't have to put a wash over it, but you can if you want. Again, you know, the colors and everything are going to be up to you, depending on your terrain, your, you know, your mat, however you want it to be done. You can adjust these uh, steps to however you like. These are just the ones I'm making and making a bit more of an arboreal forest for it. So I'm going to put down this, uh, like, this light brown color underneath first. Once that's all dry, I'm going to take a mix of white and black paint to make gray. Not a pure gray, so it's a little darker, a little bit lighter. It's perfectly fine. Like I said, water it down with the paint, with the water you're existing, including your brushes. Gives it a little bit more definition because now you're mixing in the black, you're mixing in the brown. It makes everything a little bit more, you know, uniform a bit. Kind of brings everything together like everything's in that one place itself. It's not, you know, different colors you know, basic colors coming from there, you're starting to add some of the other textures at different layers into it as well. Once you have all that done and it's all dried off, we're going to start with the next flocking layer. I'm going to use these woodland scenic flocking, uh, different color flocking. I actually got these for this uh, project here. And it came with this watered down PVA kind of like, uh, I don't want to say like cement, like hardening, you know, spray. It's just really watered down PVA. You can just make it yourself. Um, but yeah, so spray one quick spurts and I'm going to put the brown coloring on it first to give it kind of like a base layer underneath. Um, like I said, you can adjust these however you want. I'm just going to put that on there. And I got this little tray as well for off of Amazon for like five bucks. Makes cleanup so much easier as well. So I'm going to put these on there, and I'm sorry for the shots. I'm going to adjust the shots for the next time I do these projects. Um, once it's all dry, I'm going to put another layer down just to kind of like seal everything in, as well as putting the green layer on top that I want to make it that more arboreal feel to you know, give it a pop of color. I'm going to do it on a couple of these and just, you know, make sure everything's all sealed up, everything's sticking. I tried using the spray function on there, like, this, like the mist. It didn't really work, so I just put the knob back on there and just use the regular old function of it. Now, once those are done, you're going to go over, like I tried to spray again there. Didn't really work on that spritzer they gave me. Um, so I just put the knob back on. You're just going to cover this down with glue, uh, P water down PVA glue, just make sure everything sticks. Watch where you put these on afterwards. I put this on like cardboard, so it did get stuck to it a little bit. Nothing really tore away, but like I said, be mindful of where you're putting this on. This is glue. Things are going to get stuck. I don't want you damaging your stuff. Thankfully, mine didn't get damaged at all, but remember, watch where you're putting things at. Now, I should have done this a little bit before and before I put the blocking down, but I'm going to go back and just kind of like uh, put a black wash on all of the lock parts to give it a bit more definition. Uh, like I said, do this before you do the flocking steps. I kept this in order of how I did it, but definitely do this before. Make sure you have some really, you know, watered down paint. The first part wasn't watered down enough for me. So I watered down a little bit more with just the, the water I had. I had been using through this entire project. You really could just use that, but you know, put a little bit of paint in there, just to give it a little bit more, you know, umph to it, for lack of better words. Yeah, and just go around, make sure everything is, you know, covered. Everything you want to be stone, and like I said, you can always make it, you know, adjust it to however you want. All these colors are interchangeable to however you want your board to be. I'm going for this. This these colors. You can be tan. Uh, you can get tan colors are going to be a more you know, desert feel to it or you can make it you know darker if you want it to be more of like an arctic feel or however you want to do it these are just the ones i wanted for it this is what i was looking for uh, but yeah just go around make sure everything is covered up that is stone just get a little bit more definition to everything you are seeing here
And then once that's all done and all dried, you'll have these beautiful, beautiful hills. Um, I, on here, I'm displaying my slap chopped blood ravens. Um, if you want to, if you want me to show you how I painted these, I can show you later on in another video. But yeah, you'll have all these different ones for your tabletop war games, your Warhammer, your D and D, anything you play. These are very useful, very not modular, but very handy to have. Um, and like I said, any of the steps I've used before can always be interchanged for your setup. And I hope, well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, stay around for more terrain videos and other miniature painting videos. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. And remember, guys, eyes up and keep rolling.